Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Place Factorio Angel Bobs. Today I've, um, I'm have i going to show off the uh, module production facility I'm, um, well I won't say I've finished but I'm, I'm currently working on. So I don't know if you remember from the last episode but it turns out that in order to launch the rocket one of the extra research things I needed was uh, module based research. And that's a bit tricky because instead of using the normal science packs which I'm building up over here and have got absolutely loads of and is all fully under control and everything and and he's being fed down to this nice big science facility here. Now, for, for module research, you actually require these module boards instead. And there's uh, three th three or four types of those. Um, no, there isn't. There's one, two, three, four. Okay, yeah, there's four types of those. So that's not, not, not too bad, especially as that one is just a combination of some of the others. Um, but they're all very, very different. And that required a sort of a massive dive into other sort of complicated things. So... In order to make those, the final step of this, I'm going to go through this in reverse order for novelty value. The, the final step is, um, is, is using the, this facility here, which takes in sort of elect basic electronic components, transistors, solder, and module boards, which are made from fairly normal stuff. Um, most of which, a lot of which is required for building the electronic circuit boards of, of various types. So I've got a lot of that stuff here already, which is why I'm doing this, this little stage over here, because I needed all three of these, the solder, components and so on it didn't seem worth loading them onto trains and taking them off to a separate thing so I've got a little thing here that's making these and then I'll probably start making the actual modules up here as well because I want to go and shove productivity modules and everything to sort of so I get a bit more of stuff so I've got a train bringing the um, this one here is because it's uh, because there's three stops with three three sort of wagons on it one for each of the three types of crystal i've got a three three train with a with a single um, locomotive on the front of it which is breaking the rules i've been using everywhere else but eh, it's fine if it's in there it doesn't doesn't really matter it does mean i've got two specific trains just doing this journey and this journey though so that's those modules are then being taken once i finish making the module boards some of them are then being taken over to here by this train dumped onto these belts down here to these module labs which are different from normal science labs of course um, and I'm able to use those to do various ty the, the various types of module research and um, so yeah I've, I've done a bit of that it's working fine that's great getting to that point was quite tricky though so so those the train that was coming over here was bringing over these crystal things that you can see on this belt here these blue and green ones for this one and the red ones up on this side those it turns out where is it over here somewhere yes those are made so you need to take in these other types of crystals and grind them with it with one of these grindstones that have got zipping around on these belts here now you might notice that there's only one or two there's, there aren't very many of these grindstones actually whiffling their way around the, the uh, circuits here the system here <laughs> and this is because you need a specific type of crystal stuff to, to make them um, and each one is only good for three uses so there's a there's a 33 percent chance that after this grinds through it oh no that one did release it let's see if this one does yeah that one didn't release its grindstone so every so often they get destroyed um, now that's okay because this machine down here that's taking in the yellow crystals produces one of each of the three colors and this dust which uh, sort of powder even which gets turned into a, gr a grindstone puts on put onto a grindstone rather here and then will on average last for the three crystals it's produced so the limiting factor isn't actually the um, the crystal powder, otherwise I'd, I'd have gone off and got some from somewhere else. It looks a bit odd because I've got these backlogs here, um, because I didn't realise how much of a shortage there'd be of it at first, so I was using it for something else. Um, but other than that, it, it's completely sustainable. They will, they should get carry on being produced at the same rate they used up. So, yellow crystals, yes. Those come from these uh, crystallizer machines here, which take in polluted artificial fish water, of all things. Um, and somehow they crystallize, they, they turn that into yellow crystals that you then chop up into the colourful ones. I'm not quite sure exactly how that works. Obviously the Factorio and planet, planet fish um, turn produce some sort of something that can be crystallised out from their, from their waste, which is absolutely lovely. So to get that, I've got artificial fish water here. That's easy enough to make. It's just water and salty water, I think. And then I've got all of these fish tanks down here. And as you can see, I've got fish happily swimming around in them. So these ones at the bottom will breed the fish, and these ones at the top pet the fish. Um, to be honest, there's not really... A, it's, the recipes are essentially fairly similar, except this one produces more fish than it takes in, and this one uses up more fish than it gives out. So 
essentially these will produce extra fish these will use up the extra fish so i've got a, a splitter on the end here that sends as many fish as possible downwards so i don't run out and then any excess get passed around here that's why these are all running quite happily but the ones along the top aren't i don't it's not producing that many excess fish at this point i could put in a load more um, aquarium actually because these yeah just yeah, because i've got plenty of fish the problem is they also require this nutrient stuff and i haven't got very much of that because that comes from down here this sort of biological system down here which is growing that's quite good timing these seeds come out they get they go into the seed extractor and get almost immediately in fact turned back into seeds that are ready to reuse that then get passed into this this machine which is a, as it says, it's a farm. So it grows the seeds, you get a load of the um, the crop output, whatever that's called, and then five dormant seeds that can be refreshed by the seed extractors over here. So that's a, it's a closed loop, but making those seeds is extremely frustrating uh, because it requires those desert garden things. Those are the things I mentioned um, in the in an earlier episode, the one where I was talking about the, the weird biological stuff. Um, so I went when you need to go out and actually find in the world and they're extremely rare and when you process one of them it'll turn into one of about half a dozen different seeds if you're lucky and I think there's a chance it might not actually turn into anything at all so here's the desert garden there we go this is this this was the recipe I used so it could have turned into any of these or it might have turned into nothing, and I possibly had to run it twice before I got it. I can't, rem I can't remember. Or was it this recipe? It was probably this recipe, actually. But anyway, so it's, it's you have to go out and find these bloody things. In fact, it wasn't even this one. It was a different type of garden as, as well. So it was, yeah, again, different. And yet, so I don't have any of those because that sort of glitch when I did the upgrade... There were some desert gardens in all of these, well, in, in a couple of these machines, because they were doing the multiplying thing and breeding them up for me. And they all just vanished during the upgrade. So I was a bit in a bit in a bit of an awkward position for trying to get the, the gardens to get this up and running. So I might yeah, as I say, I managed to find one. Um, now this process does have a 5% chance of producing an additional um, additional seed whenever it runs. And it's run 47 times and it's produced two additional seeds which is is about what you'd expect however because these things will hold enough to do an additional run there's as you can see there's the five that are being used in here and there's an additional two in there so it won't actually start to run any more often until it's until i manage to produce another three it's possible i could come up with some sort of cunning circuit system that would if i got up to 10 would in fact, I could just use a splitter that would split them between two different farms. But at the moment, it's, it's not worth it. I've only, I've only got two extra ones, so that would just break things at this point. However, it does produce a reasonable amount, a reasonable amount of the crop each time it runs. So it is keeping my, my fisheries going, just about. It's, it's keeping, it is keeping this running. But, um, but not really as fast as I'd like it to. Um, you can see the rate that these crystals are coming out here. It's it's a very slow process. He says as three come out in a row. Um, yeah, it's, it's a very slow process, but it is actually producing them. And to be honest, I don't need an enormous number of modules at this stage. So I'm reasonably happy to leave this just chugging round and round and gradually increasing the number of seeds I've got until hopefully it will eventually have enough that I'll... Uh, I'll be able to just sort of expand it up a bit, put in another farm, and then maybe, and then it'll run a bit faster and so on. It should sort of then just increase exponentially, like that, and that'll be rather nice. So that's, yeah, I mean, it, it it's working. There's there's no, nothing, there's no actual problems here. It it's just running a bit too slowly because it's, yeah, it's, it's it takes a while for these to grow because they're plants, and. It takes a while for all the seeds and things to be multiplied up because low, very low percentages. But yeah, as I say, I can live with that. I've got I've got enough modules. That I've done my uh, and here's some here's some of the uh, crystals arriving. I've got enough modules. That I've done the research I needed to get the to get ready for the rocket, and I've got enough of these over overspilled here that I can start making some modules. Not going to be a huge number yet, but as I say, eventually I'll get there. And yes, with that, I've now managed to break through. I've researched the rocket. At last, finally. So now I can, um, or at least I've researched the rocket silo. I need to check whether there's actually any more things that I need for a rocket. I don't think there are, but we shall see. Um, 
Oh yes, there's the um, the satellite. I'm going to need to research that as well. Okay, let's get that going. Um, but yeah, so there's the uh, the rocket is is now ready for me to start for me to build a uh, a rocket silo. I'll have to try and find somewhere to squeeze that in on here just to to make the thing, and then I'll go and put the rocket silo somewhere else, maybe over here. There's a nice big space, and then I'm I'm guessing I'm going to need to create. Um, well, in, in vanilla, you need rocket fuel, low density structures, and uh, rocket control modules, I think, and a satellite which requires radar, solar panels, and probably other things. I'm expecting that to be a bit more complicated, but we'll see how it goes. I've got I've got plenty of space. I've got a reasonable amount of resources. So, yeah, I think I might be getting relatively close to the nominal finishing the game point where I where I managed to launch a rocket with a satellite on it. Um, it's actually closer than I was expecting. I was I was thinking I was only about two thirds of the way through, but maybe I'm actually quite close. I've also fought a couple of fires recently as well. Let's see what we got. Yeah, so the um, the aluminium wasn't actually in fact still isn't coming through as fast as I wanted um, it's being produced at a, I've now gone in here and I've, I've put in these purple belts all over the place so the aluminium is in theory oh and I sorted out a load of inserters I've, I've missed a load of, somehow I've managed my, my blueprint was missing inserters for lots of the um, lots of the the uh, what are the things casting machines so they weren't unloading onto these belts which I don't know how I managed that but I've gone out and fixed this one uh, so there's a l there's more than enough being put on this belt, but as you can see, it's not actually going very quickly down the belt because this part of the belt hasn't been upgraded yet. This is still waiting for purple purple belts to uh, to come in and make the whole thing faster. Um, now it turns out I'm not actually building purple belts at the moment because if we look up here, there's no there's no titanium on this belt, and I trace that back down here, um, and it turned out it was my old friend the uh, the fluid balancing. So um, up here I've got this set of systems that are happily producing um, purified water and, and saline water, great, but they were producing it too fast so these chemical plants down here, um, no washing plants down here, hydro plants down here, didn't have anywhere to dump the purified water they were creating so that was creating a, a sort of a, um, a bottleneck and just, um, not even a bottleneck, a, 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 a gridlock and stopping it all working so I whacked this tanking down here as a stopgap measure um, so to have some, somewhere to overflow and then this green wire you can see that runs all the way up here up these big pylons all the way up the side and then up to here it's hooked up to this pump so if there's ever less than a hundred thousand in the cyst in that tank at the bottom we'll get some more pumped in there so if we're using it faster than it's being produced from that which I think we generally do we get it topped up but there's always plenty of room in this tank for the overflow from these machines so I think that should keep it nice and balanced uh, we'll see it could be famous last words but for now it seems to be working we've got the three the three crystal types and the catalysts going in here these belts are full there's a decent rate of titanium being produced it's a it's almost a full yellow belt I'll probably go down here and make this a bit faster because you know I, titanium seems to be being used in reasonably large quantities. Oh, we've got 10,000 here now, so we might be about to get a train. Yes, in fact, we are about to get a train. I could tell by the yellow light, in case you're wondering, <laughs> which has now gone blue. Uh, yeah, I'm... Yeah, so that's, that's going quite well. Um, one other thing I noticed whenever I zoom out is that there's a lot of um, a lot of these flashing saying, hey, we don't have enough purple inserters to purple stack inserters to upgrade all of these. But I think that again is because we're out of titanium. Once that flows flows in again, let's have a look. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, the purple stack inserters need titanium as well. So so once that once we get that back on the on the bus, then we should be all right. We wanted to research white science. There it is. Still can't get that. What's what else do I need? Ooh. Nuclear fuel stuff. Okay, let's get that going. Um, okay, so th those that's the the main thing I've done is is as I said is, is all, all the module shenanigans here and all of and this huge this big thing over here. That was a massive headache just trying to work the whole thing backwards and try and find some way of producing the nutrient sludge that I needed. I think there might be other ways involving sort of growing biters from um, in a biter pen and stuff like that. So I might have a look into that. That could be quite interesting. And um, yeah, as I'm, I'm, I'm kind of curious about it. What's this? Ooh, radio thermoelectric generator. Interesting. Um, yeah, carry on with that. So 
yeah, I might have a look into into a biter zoo and put that in over here and see if I can pump some pump some good, uh, some nutrients in in a different way for the fish to eat. That could be interesting. I've also expanded my um, solar arrays, so there's this now this massive one going all the way across the top of here, uh, which I think is rather nice. It's um it's an area of the base that I wasn't really using because these science production systems seem to be good enough and if I and there isn't room to duplicate them anyway so if I if I need to increase the quantities I'm gonna to have to put them somewhere else so yeah it seemed like a good area that I wasn't really using and I think yes it's, there's enough there that I'm not really using my um not really using the resources to to, to uh, not really using the solar panel to its power to its full potential I guess I'll find out next time I do a massive bot push um, that causes these sort of spikes whether I've got actually got enough um, capacity to for it all, but yeah, for now it seems to be pretty good. I should probably um, acknowledge once again that yes, I am using the always day mod, which makes solar panels extremely cheaty because they they produce power all the time instead of just during the day. Otherwise, I'd have to have a rack of um, about the same size of battery packs all the way across here, um, <laughs> and yeah, I've just not bothered with that because. Um, well, I actually, I originally installed Always Day just because it was, I was getting fed up of running around in the dark and trying to sort things and, and, and without before I had night vision. Um, but I've kept it, and um, yeah, I've, there's no real excuse, I've just kept it. Right, I think that's most of the stuff I've done recently. Um, as I said, the uh, this whole thing was a... I wouldn't say it was a mind screw or anything like that, but it was... It was a big job and it required a lot of sort of tracing stuff backwards. Most of the things I do, I feel like there's sort of, I trace back through half a dozen steps and it, or, and it or fairly quickly gets back to things I've already got. Maybe it's, maybe it's really, really complicated, but one of those steps is solder, which I've already solved. Or one of the steps is gold, and that again is quite complicated, but I've already got it. But this one was also all new stuff because I've not I've not touched any of the biological stuff really so it was yeah it was a made made me look at a new area which I suppose is the point of it and why it required that so that was yeah quite interesting the next step is going to be putting in some sort of system here to create the modules and then um, actually trying to get the the uh, the rocket functioning and working and uh, ooh, 2000 that's going to take a while um, and get a rocket rocket silo built and find out what I actually need to put in to put, to put in the rocket that's going to be fun and I hope you'll join me to see how I do that I'll see you then <laughs>